Welcome, Roland. Thank you. To the uh, crowdsourcing week. You've mm -hmm. been talking about open innovation, mm -hmm. and um, you told about a lot of different cases. Yep. Is there a limit to the issues that can be crowdsourced? Oh, great question. I don't think there is. I think uh, crowdsourcing is a, a fantastic technique that can be applied to solve technical problems, commercial challenges, social issues. So yeah, no, I don't think it's constrained in any way. So what, if there is no limit, what kind of organizations should feel the heat that they should start working on crowdsourcing? Uh, well, I think a lot of a lot of large organisations need to be reminded that the, um, you know there's tremendous potential kind of outside of the organisation. You can't just rely on your own uh, uh, intelligence these days. You need to kind of harness the intelligence of others. So I think a lot of smaller organisations do that naturally because they have to because they're mm -hmm. agile and they don't have the resources. So in terms of who feels the heat, it's kind of large, dysfunctional, bureaucratic organisations who need to kind of be shaken up and realise that. You know, there's uh, there's just a whole world of kind of potential out there if only you know how to tap into it. Because what are they missing out of if they don't tap into that? Great ideas, great opportunities, um, uh, just the ability to move fast um, as well. So um, yeah, pretty much everything. And in those cases you talked about, mm -hmm. um, uh, they had different issues that were addressed. Yeah. Um, why do people cooperate? Why do they participate in those those cases? And is there a difference? Mm -hmm between their motivations and the case? Uh, well, absolutely. I think people have a, a variety of uh, reasons for participating, a mixture of uh, kind of personal reasons, which might be you know, solving a problem that I have or you know, something that I care about, um, uh, with more you know, extrinsic motivations around you know, there's some money or a business opportunity or some way to scale my idea much bigger and faster than I could on my own. So, uh, I think it, you always have to be aware of the, the kind of personal as well as the, uh, the, the internal as well as the external kind of motivations for this kind of stuff and, and kind of create the right balance for that. But uh, are there any motivations that stick out, mm -hmm. like money or making the, play, the world a better place? Uh, I think, um, uh, I, I don't think money is it, so no. Uh, I think you need to pay people for effort. Um, or you need to recognize people's contributions, but uh, I don't think money is actually the motivator, so, um, but I do think it's a necessary part of the process. I think um, people have a deep-seated social need to connect with people uh, and at whatever level want to you know, make a difference. So I think crowdsourcing and open innovation and all of these buzzwords uh, sort of tap into a much deeper, I think, psychological and so social need that we all have to, to connect with people. So. Um you also said that uh, using the force of the crowd is a U-shaped yeah. process. Mm -hmm. yep. That it's fun in the beginning and it's fun in the end. Yeah. Um, do you have any uh, advice that you could mm. give people to go through the bottleneck that's underneath in the U? Sure. Um, move fast, as fast as you possibly can. Set a, a, a kind of ridiculously ambitious time scale because n nothing kills uh, crowdsourcing faster than just uh, you, know, you know delays and, and, and people just lose interest. You, mm -hmm. you, you need a uh, momentum. You need a, a kind of process to get you through, um, uh, and it helps to have some experience, which is maybe where some of the organisations here at Crowdsourcing Week can help, who've been there before, and they they, they can hang in there when when it's maybe not going uh, at quite as people expected. So so yeah, momentum, process, experience. Uh, and, uh, and, and a leap of faith. So I think if you don't believe it's going to work, you will either deliberately or, 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 or not undermine the whole thing. So you need to believe that this is the right thing to do. So it requires you know, a change up here as well. But opening up, is that also a leap of faith? Because it's often considered to be uh, black and white. You open up or you yeah. don't. Yeah. Um, also, in the case you talked about, there's a, uh, um, uh, there's a variety of, mm. of, of processes yeah. that are being crowdsourced. Yeah. Um, is there a growth path for organizations that want to experiment with opening up or using the force of the crowd? Sure. Uh, well, I mean, the first question, uh, it's definitely not just black and white. I think opening up is right at certain times and, and not at other times. So even though we're called 100% open, we wouldn't advocate being open about everything at all times to everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, it's about yeah, appropriateness for what you're trying to do and at the right time. Um, uh, is there a growth path was your second question, yeah. I think. Uh, I think there is. I mean, we would always advocate, you know, start small, have a little kind of pilot project or an experiment, uh, 
building on that success, you kind of grow it and you kind of bring people along through experience. No amount of evangelizing, no matter how charismatic, uh, is going to persuade people to do this. You absolutely can only learn about why open innovation and crowdsourcing is powerful by experiencing it firsthand. So you need to do that, else you'll never, you'll never do it. Uh, is there a difference between commercial organizations and non-commercial organizations to use these tools? Um, uh, I think there is, um, uh, and funnily enough, I think kind of non-commercial, kind of socially driven organizations often have an advantage because people, you know, connect often more on a deep kind of personal level with solving a social problem. Uh, we were doing some work with a cancer charity a few years ago, and uh, well, we were running workshops as well as an online crowdsourcing community, uh, and people were sharing their stories of cancer, which you know, uh, understandably, people were in tears and you know giving each other hugs within a few minutes, you know, mm -hmm. so around a kind of social issue that people care about, um, you can make that connection much faster. You know, when you're talking about washing machines or uh, it's harder to get that connection. Uh, you still can, but it's harder. So in some ways, I think the kind of socially driven crowdsourcing has an advantage. It has other challenges as well, but um, yeah. Cool. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Cheers.